supplies you or gives you the mind of God in the moment, in real time. I know you got your prayer times and your devotional times in the morning or whatever, but that's not the only time he speaks. That's usually the only time we make ourselves available to hear. Because once you up and you dust off your knees from prayer, you're like, oh, I got it. If he ain't speak then, I'm on my own. But he says, in all thy ways, acknowledge me and I'll give you my thoughts for you in real time. How many of y'all need real time wisdom? Yeah. I don't always need wisdom in January for July. You know what I mean? Like, there's coming a day when you, no, I need it right now. Right in the moment. I'm asking him for it now while I'm preaching. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm like, Lord, what should I say next? Lord, tell me, Lord. I'm saying it while I'm preaching and I study. But you still need real time wisdom. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is he that partners with your thoughts, that gives you the mind of God. Now, whether we accept it and choose it or not is a different story because we have gotten so used to innately denying it because of whatever the moment usually calls for. If you turn up on me, I'm just going to turn up on you. That's just what it is. So I don't even consult God because I know how to handle this. Stop thinking you know how to handle it. It is the thoughts that say, oh, I got this, that denies wise counsel. If you're sick of going through the same thing, stop thinking you can handle it. You enduring it is not you handling it. Just because you can endure it does not mean you should. And we keep celebrating the strength that we have to endure such dysfunction for so long when God never intended you to endure it for that long. Stop celebrating that strength. Just because he's good. Just because he has grace. Just because, you know what I mean? Where sin abound, grace abound much more. He always going to have more grace. You're always going to have more strength. I could do it. But I, it doesn't mean you should. How long are you going to go around the same mountain? He asked the people of God that. He asked Moses and them. Y'all going to just keep circling and say, how long? And he was with them. It's not enough just to have God with you. You need to listen to him. Because if you make your bed in hell, he's there. So it's not just about having him with you. What's the benefit of his presence? His word, his advice, his counsel, his way is the advantage of his presence. I don't like being around people that don't say nothing. I'll be like, you know, we're in the car going to Miami. It's two and a half hours and you ain't say nothing. I'm scared. So the advantage of your presence is the conversation. The advantage of having you in my life is the communication. What's the use of having God in your life and he ain't saying nothing? I don't just want God in my life. I don't just want his presence. I need his words, his counsel. Because that's what's going to fight this warfare in my head. The Holy Ghost is real-time wisdom, real-time counsel, real-time advice. It's God's thoughts literally for me in that moment. It's not a broad stroke, love your neighbor. You know what I'm saying? I can say that, then you got to apply it. Like, okay, so who said I, who I need to love tonight? It, God, the Holy Ghost ain't preaching to you ever. I can preach and hope I... <laughs> I'm praying right now something I'm saying is blessing y'all. You understand? But I don't know. The Holy Ghost knows what he's saying is blessing you right now. It can help you right now. If you obey it, you will be free right now. It's not a, you understand what I'm saying? Hearing the voice of God for your life is not a preacher that can hit or miss. Your personal tailor-made storm. Sometimes you need a tailor-made word for a tailor-made problem. How many of y'all in here, you ain't got a broad stroke issue? I got a personal unique tailor-made for me problem so you need a tailor-made for me answer 
And we can give direction as preachers or if we're prophetically speaking, we can speak directly to it. But more than a preacher, more than a church, you need the Holy Spirit. Somebody right now say, Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Say it again, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Say it again, fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your counsel. In the name of Jesus, I receive your gift of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. You got to say it. Thank you, Jesus. That means you receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for wise counsel. Thank you. We learned this morning. If you just get rid of toxic and don't fill up, toxic comes back stronger. When an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he seeks rest. This is what the Bible says. So the unclean spirit done got kicked out. You done got ex- ex- exercised, right? He's looking for rest. And when he doesn't find it, he goes back to, the Bible says, his house. These demons done claimed your mind as theirs. They done claim your body as theirs. You do everything they suggest anyway. They done claimed you as theirs. And when he comes back and he finds the house empty and swept, yes, you got rid of everything bad, but you didn't fill up with the word. You didn't fill up with worship. You ain't praying more. It's not about what you stopped. What have you started? Live. It's not just about what you have stopped. What have you started? You got to fill up the house. You got to fill up your heart. You got to fill up your mind. He sees the house empty and he goes and gets seven other spirits. The Bible says this, more vile, more evil, more perverted, more trifling, more ratchet than him. And he the one you kicked out. He was so bad, you kicked him out. He goes and get seven spirits worse than him. And say, yeah, she kicked me out, but she ain't fill up to her heart. Let's, let's. You might have broke up with him or her, but you better fill up that space. Okay. I ain't going to get too much of your business. I'm going to stay in the word. It's too much personal opinions to get you, get you messed up these days. So somebody say, fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run, oh, I want to run. Say, fill me up. Fill me up. Say, till I overflow. Till I overflow. Why are you saying that? I want to run. Oh, Sing it again. I wanna run. Oh, One more time. Say, fill me up. Oh, Jesus. Hey, hey. Because I want to run. Just clean me out, Lord. But fill me up, fill me up. Fill me up, fill me up. So I need to be filled and not just delivered. And mom, check this out. Sometimes if I'm filled, that will bring deliverance. If I occupy my heart with him, he's not going to share the same space with any unclean thing. So I don't even have to focus on deliverance. I I focus on him and his presence. And as you feel me, everything that's not like you, it'll come out of me. (laughs) Fill me up, hey. Fill me up, hey. Fill me up, hey. Fill me up, hey. Say, fill me up. Sing it, Liz. Sing it, sing it, sing it. Sing it, sing it, sing it.
We need to run over. If you fill up a cup, sometimes when ice cream left out overnight in a cup or something in my house, I don't dump the ice cream out. I like to have fun. It's a bowl, ice cream left. This don't happen often, but I don't just dump the ice cream out. I like to have fun. I just run it under the water. Just turn the hot water on and just let it, just let it fall out. And when it fall out the bowl, I keep letting the water run so the water can chase it down the drain. <laughs> so you don't always have to scoop out the bad. Just let the pure run in. And let it keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep praying, keep worshiping, keep giving, keep loving. Hey, he'll purify you. He'll cleanse you. One more time, say, fill me. Fill me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanna run. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanna run. Woo! One more time. actually have to run over. David said, my cup runneth over. That keeps you pure. When the water keeps running, I stay clean. Even if you're a clean glass of water, if you just sit there, dust, dust will settle on you. Maybe debris will settle on you. Maybe little bugs and gnats will settle on you. You could be a pure, clean glass, but if you just sit there and you're not constantly poured into, you too can become dingy. You too can become cloudy. You too can become dirty. You gotta keep it running. You gotta, you gotta keep it running. You gotta, you gotta keep it running. You better, you better keep it running. You better, you better keep it running. You better, you better, you better, you better, you better, you better fill me up. Tell your neighbor, keep it running. Don't turn. And at my house, y'all. At my house. At my house. We have, to the glory of God, we got two wells at our house. So we don't worry about water bills. Because we can have our own water supply. So I can just keep the water on. And forget about it. And cause I turn the shower on sometimes and just forget it's on, but I don't worry about the bill because we got our own endless supply, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a water you can keep on. This is something you just let it keep running. Just let it keep running. It'll never run out. Let it keep running. It'll never run out. Let it keep running. It'll never come out. Let it keep running. It'll never run out. I want to run on. Keep it on. This is not something you turn on during prayer time and you turn it off to save it. You ain't got to save it. You're already saved. <laughs> Keep it running. What should I do now? He cut me off. What should I do now? She made me mad. What should I do now? He gave my nerves. What should I do now? Keep it running. Keep it flowing. Keep it going. Keep it growing. He's in you. He's with you. He loves you. He helps you. So fill me up. Do the do the lie on the floor. Do the do I want to run over. Do the do the I want to run over. Do the do the They call your body up. Do the do the Oh yeah 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 yeah. Jesus. Fill us, Lord. Fill us up today in the name of Jesus. So everything not like you comes out. Fill us. It'll take too much work to get all the dust out of the cup. It'll take too much work, and you'll make it more dirty trying to dig for the dirt. So we're not focusing on the dirt this morning. We're focusing on Him. And as we're filled with him, everything not like him will come out. That gives you patience for others. 
they ain't got it yet they still dealing with let, let them keep the water running it took a while for you it might take a while for others don't project the process what it takes for you it might not take for somebody else but this is why we got to keep it running y'all I feel this thing y'all Y'all excuse me, we done asked him to fill us and now I feel the feeling. Hallelujah, he done answered us that quick, y'all. I said, he responded that fast. He responded that quick. Whether you know it or not, he's, 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 he's feeling you. Whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, he's feeling you right now. He's feeling you. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Ah! Thank you, Jesus! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank yeah. you, Jesus! Oh! Thank you, Jesus! Woo! I feel his presence in here. Thank you, Jesus! Oh, thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Can you stop, please? Can you stop? Can you stop? Can you stop? Ah! Uh, hey! All right. <laughs> Tell somebody close to you, keep it running. Keep it running. Keep it running. Keep his spirit consistently running. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you for your spirit. Oh, oh, oh. oh God, thank you for your power. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Thank you for your wisdom. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Thank you for your strength, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh, oh. We want the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh, oh. We need the fire on the Holy Ghost. Fill us up, fill us up, fill us up, fill us up, fill us up. We want the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey. We need the fire, 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 fire. Fill us up, fill us up, fill us up, fill us up, fill us up. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We want the fire of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill us up, 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 fill us up. We want the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire, 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 fire.
something's happening today. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Stir it up, shake it up, stir it up. Stir it up, shake it up, stir it up. Stir it up, shake it up, stir it up. Stir it up, shake it up, stir it up. Spirit of God, have your way. Spirit of God, flow in this place. Spirit of God, we seek your face. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need Hey, Spirit of God, flow in this place. Spirit of God, please have your way. Spirit of God, we seek your face. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. right now. Thank you for filling us with you. Hallelujah. Because we believe that as we're filled with you, everything not like you will be removed from our lives. So may we focus on being filled and remaining filled to the point of overflow with your presence, with your ways, with your word with your counsel, with your comfort, with your grace and your love. You love us, that's why we trust you. Your way would be hard if we didn't believe you loved us. Obeying you would be challenging if we didn't first believe you loved us. (laughs) No instruction you give us is too hard, no matter how bad my flesh wants it. I'm willing to obey because I'm secure in the fact that he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves he loves us oh how he loves us Ooh. oh how he loves us oh how he loves one more time Tim he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. this flowing presence consistently in our hearts because even the scriptures tell us that the heart you can go to the first scripture I got 10 minutes unless we just gonna stay here which I want to do let's not leave this thing let's stay right here as I share a few things right right 
right? Right. Oh, no. The heart is deceitful, so I can't trust that. It's deceitful, so I can't lean on that. My heart is deceitful, digest that. Our hearts are deceitful, digest that. Above all things, take that in two. Above all things, take that in two. Our hearts are deceitful. You think it's what you want, think it what's best, deceitful. Our hearts will confuse us. Thinking it's best, thinking it's what we want, deceitful. Don't follow that, it's deceitful. Don't follow that, it's confusing. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct you. Above all things, who can know it? Another scripture says, who knows how bad it really is? Another scripture says, who knows its secret motives? So the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. My heart ain't wicked. That might be the first thing you're deceived by. Now I'm not calling you evil or wicked, but the propensity or the lean or the nature of the heart is the desire for the flesh. The heart is always on the flesh side. Your heart is always on your side. Your heart is always for what you want. It's easy to follow your heart, it's what the flesh wants. But you come to God, he says, deny that. So I follow my heart or follow him. You make the choice. Follow your heart, follow him. No other choice. It's confusing. Only if it's confusing, unless you deny yourself, receive his way, then there's freedom. But the heart is desperately wicked. I don't like desperate people, they do anything. I don't like desperate things. They do anything. That's like somebody who's thirsty. It's like, it's, it's too much. You want what you want so bad, you'll compromise anything? What type of person are you? You don't even know. You're just a chameleon and whatever you call for in the moment, you become it. That's why he says, be filled with the spirit. What we're singing about now, delight yourself in him. Thank you, Major. <laughs> He'll give you desires. That's what he just said. What'd you say, Major? What'd you say? Give him the mic, please. No, minister to us. No, I'm serious. It's not a. It's not an artist. He's he's ministering. He'll give you. Yeah. The desires of your heart. Only if you what? Delight yourself in him. Yeah. Yeah. And he will. He will. He'll give you. He'll give it to you. The desires of your heart, girl. Yeah. Woo. Delight yourself in him. <laughs> and he will. Yeah. He will give you. Yeah. Give you. The desires of your heart. Only if you. Delight yourself in him. <laughs> He will give you the desires of your heart. He will when you yeah. yourself in him he will what are you gonna do he will give you freely 
freely give. your heart. When we delight ourselves, delight ourselves in Him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh Lord, I believe You will give me. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so good he will give you the of your heart. <sighs> when you delight yourself in him, he'll give you. How? Oh! How? Oh! Woo! He'll give you. Thank you for your ministry, Major. Let's thank God for him. Thank you. But he's serious. He's serious, and I hope y'all serious. I hope you received it. Delight yourself in him, and he'll give you, he'll give you the desires, oh God, of your heart. I see that two ways. He'll give you what your heart desires, and he'll give you a desire. <laughs> he'll give you what you desire and what to desire so when you delight yourself in him he'll give you what you want and what to want i need that kind of god i need that kind of direction if that's you too praise him right now give me what i want and give me what to want give me my desire and give me what to desire oh jesus When what we want is top priority, then whatever philosophy, lifestyle, or whatever suggestion supports that becomes true to you. Let me say that again. When what we want is top priority, whatever supports what we want is true to us. That's how we're deceived and believe lies. Whoever supports the mindset that I have, that's true. When Jesus already said, I am the truth. I'm the way and the truth. You understand what I'm saying? But if we want, I don't even know what to say. You want chicken so bad. Popeyes come out with a chicken sandwich. This is the best thing. Anything that supports what you want, becomes true to you and that's how you can be deceived and receive lies in the end times men will be calling wrong right and right wrong because of their prioritized desires but that's how the heart deceives us and through those selfish acts of ambition and greed and whatever we want we let in other ghosts. And I'm gonna close. But the series I'm preaching, preaching in my first closing, y'all, because the Spirit is here, but I do wanna give you not just a heart feel, but something to think about. We always say it's not about the act. It's more about the access that the act opens up. Ah, oh, it's just sex. It could be just that. It could be just drugs. It could be just cussing them out. It could be just whatever you want. Just bitterness, just anger, just a little jealousy. I'm just hating in my heart. They don't know I'm hating on every post they put up. It's just, it's not the choice only. It's the access the choice allows. It's the seven other spirits that I was talking about. Like, y'all, if she'll lie, she'll cheat too. And she'll just, so come on. So no spirit, all spirits travel in packs. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, oh, you got a lust spirit. Chances are it ain't just that. You got a lying spirit, a cussing spirit. You say cussing spirit. <laughs> Chances are it's never just that. But they come in. 
I know y'all never used to sneak in clubs or concerts. That's just what I used to do. I used to come in with the band, like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm playing with the... I got right in the concert, like, hey. I snuck in many concerts with the band. I'm with the band. That's what these demons and spirits are saying. I'm with the lies. I never wanted violence in my life. Yeah, but they just came in with the band. So because we don't understand, I say it every week, but we don't understand the mystery of that. We don't know what we're letting in. That's why God is saying stay away from these sins or immoral things. That's not godly. Any disobedience is sin, right? All disobedience is sin. When we disobey God, we give the enemy access. Stay right there, Joe, because that reminds me I'm not going to chill here. To the point where Jesus comes, you can just put the story up as I'm paraphrasing. Jesus comes to a city and a man meets him. He comes to a synagogue and they were astonished at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, right? And there was in their synagogue a man with the unclean spirit in church, in their synagogue, a man with the unclean spirit. Another translation says a man with a demon. So demons aren't scared of church. They fear believers and real children of God, the real church. They don't fear services. They chill in here. They like it. As long as you jump in and shout, they're like, oh, come on, get up before they think something wrong. You know, you, oh, yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. Don't look at me, don't notice. They love religion. They love church culture. They love church culture. We'll talk about that later. In the synagogue was an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us. <laughs> let us. You feel me, Noah? Alone. What have we? I thought he just said an unclean spirit. No, the unclean spirit is the band. But there are some other things that came in with the band and they're crying out let us alone what are you what are you doing jesus of nazareth are you come to destroy us i know you you're the holy one of god demons know the god we still trying to believe in the god we struggle to believe in they're convinced So you believe in God, cool. Do you obey him is the point. Demons believe. Come on, Pastor, I believe in God. So do demons. But they don't follow him. They don't obey him. Do something a demon can't do. Demons can shout. Demons can praise. Je demons can acknowledge God. But demons can't love. Demons can't forgive. Demons can't obey God. Look at your neighbor and say, do something a demon can't do. <laughs> and Jesus rebuked them saying, hold your peace or shut up. <laughs> Come out of him. And the unclean spirit tore him. And he cried with a loud voice, but he came out. And they were all amazed, and they questioned among themselves, saying, Who, what is this thing? The, what new doctrine is this? Healing is not new. Jesus healed people. That's not new. People healed. But power over spirits. Thank you for being here. Power over unclean spirits is a level that witches can't touch. Sorcerers can't touch mediums can't touch they can tell you about your grandma they can tell you about your grand but they can't touch this level of authority y'all only jesus can free us from tormenting spirits only jesus can free us from unclean spirits only jesus can set us free from those that came in with the band somebody say jesus i need you right now say it again jesus i need you right now Ooh, yeah. 
I'm reminded of another scripture. I'm going to let y'all go. This is my second closing, y'all. <laughs> it's not the next scripture, so you don't have to go there. I'm just... Remember when Jesus was walking and a man met him at the tombs in the grave? Y'all don't remember? That's why I put every scripture up there. I'm not, I, don't, I don't assume y'all know everyone. And no shade if you don't. That's why you're here. Jesus comes to a city and a man met him from the tombs. This wild man that nobody can tame. They put him in chains and he just broke every chain. They couldn't tame him. And they, they said the same thing these spirits said. What are you doing here, Jesus? Did you come to cast us out before the time? I love that. Jesus said, what is your name? They said, legion, for we are many. A lot of people snuck in. Now, I don't know how long the man had the condition, but apparently something happened that led in these ghosts. And it overtook him to the point well, he wasn't even functioning as a human anymore, living amongst the tombs, living amongst dead things. Their name is Legion, for there are many. Jesus said, come out of the man. They said, please, don't just cast us out this region. Can we, can we, can we? Because we're on assignment from Satan for this region. So don't kick me out of Tim. Can I go to Tim's uncle then? Okay, you kick me out of Tim's uncle. Can I go to Tim? Can I go, somebody in the family? Can I hit somebody else in the family? Can I hit your niece if it's not you? Can, some of y'all are dealing with other spirits <laughs> that just happen to be in the region. That's why you gotta watch where you go. You gotta watch what you do. Because there are territorial spirits. There are territorial demons that will jump in anything. They say, can we, can we? I know they looked at the disciples like, man, they got the same glory on their life. They couldn't ask to jump in the disciples because they had the same power over their life. It matters who you hang with. Look at your neighbor and say, stick with me a while, you'll be protected. I got the glory on my life. I got favor on my life. I got the power of God over my life. I got victory over my life. I got wealth over my life. I got health over my life. Anybody got it? Say, I got it. I got it. So I'm sure the demons was assessing like, who can we go? Send us to the pigs. Jesus was like, the pig, go. Go on, go on, go on, just shut up. The Bible says they went to these pigs and the pigs ran off the cliff and choked themselves. It was about 2,000. Yup, sink that in. One man had at least 2,000 persons, unclean spirits, in him. And the result of being so overwhelmed by those spirits was suicide. The pigs killed themselves. These tormenting spirits come to kill Still, they don't care about you losing your job. That's corny. After you lose your job, I'm going to get in your head like, see, it ain't never going to work. Ain't never, you might as well just give up. You might. I'm glad you lost your job. But it ain't about the job. It's about what I can get in your head with. <laughs> you got to watch your mind after disappointments. You got to watch your mind after breakups. Watch your mind after offense. Watch it! 2,001 man? Of course, he wants to kill himself. I'm not suggesting anybody in here has any in the name of Jesus, much less 2,000. But if it's possible, it's possible. I call these demons the great suggestors. I'm closing. You have, have you ever had thousands of thoughts a day, thousands of suggestions? I'm not saying they demons. I'm saying try every spirit. See if it be of God. Stop letting these thoughts just swim in your head. They're not just your thoughts all the time. It could be unclean spirits. All right. How can I do this? Here's another one really quick. Go to the next one. This is my second closer. Thank you all for coming. Jesus said, let's go to the next town so I can preach 
and he preached in the synagogue and cast out devils. Two things he did, preach, cast out devils. Sometimes it's one and the same. As you preach truth, demons come out. <laughs> Especially if demons play in your mind and you get a light turned on like, oh! And you repent. Repent is changing your thinking. Repent means to change how you think. It don't mean apologize. Y'all know that, right? All right, it don't mean say I'm sorry. Repent is, oh, I thought, I thought that was it, but this is it. That's repentance. Are you hearing me? Repentance is not even just stopping. Because you can stop out of discipline. That's what AA meetings are for. Like They train you to stop, but not to change how you think about it. I still think alcohol is a great comforter, but I know it ain't good for me, so let me stop. No, you have to change how you think about it to fully repent. Are you hearing me? And still, if you choose it after you repent, you know, oh, I'm being trifling right now. I'm being trifling and ratchet, but at least I'm not deceived. And there came a leper to him saying, please, if you will, make me whole. And he said, I will be clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed. Well, not he was healed, it left. So sicknesses, some sicknesses could be demonically influenced. All right. That's, 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 that's too. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Let me, let me go to the next one. So Jesus is in another city. I'm just walking Jesus today. Check this out. He saw this woman's condition and he said to her, dear woman, you are free. I release you forever from this crippling spirit. This woman had the spirit of infirmity, the Bible says, and she was bent over like walking like this. I think for 18 years, if I'm not mistaken, she would walk like this because she had a spirit of infirmity. She had a sickness. Jesus didn't heal her. He said, you are free from that spirit. And instantly she stood up straight and tall and overflowed with praise to God. <laughs> Woo! She was crippled and had been doubled over for 18 years. Her condition was caused by a demonic spirit of bondage that left her unable to stand up. How did that last thing leave you? How did that last storm leave you? How did that last pain leave you? God is saying, stand up straight, be loose, be free. You are not what they did. You are not what they said. You're my child. Get up, get up, get up. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some situations left us crippled. You don't trust no more. God is saying, stand up straight. Stand up. Look to the hills. For what come of your help? Why are you cast down? Why is your head down? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. You ever? I don't care if it was your fault. I don't care if you messed up. Lift up your head, live. Never hold your head down. You my child. I rebuke guilt and shame in the name of Jesus. Even if you cause the issue, God is saying, stand up straight. God is saying, lift up your head. I got you. The Bible says, the Lord upholdeth all that fall. <laughs> he gonna hold you up. All right, let me get y'all out of here. Let me just quote these scriptures as we leave. Here's my third closing. I said it last week, but I'm just gonna quote the scriptures. This is how we keep these demons far from us and give them no access. The woman was bent over 18 years. How long have you been dealing with a crippling mindset? Maybe it's a mindset. Maybe it's a false belief. Maybe it's a perverted belief that you like, you got. So now you crippled somewhere financially. I don't know. Preach to yourself right here. This that broad stroke that I don't know, but you know what it is. You know what it is. God wants you to stand up today. He wants you to stand up straight. Woo. 
straight, straight. She was crippled, but she's straight now. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm straight. That ain't the right one. Look on the other side and say, I'm straight, I'm good, I'm straight. I'm straight! Here we go. As I leave, <laughs> I want to start with the scripture that says, so with the wisdom. Now, some of these crippling things have happened when you were a child. When you're searching for what to believe. Like I discussed last week with my wife, she didn't have her father. Her mother had her at 16. So you got a 16-year-old mom who's still trying to figure out schoolwork. And a dad who's not there, but the child is like, and if the mom is embarrassed and just sit down, just go, just ah, uh, okay, just ah, uh, ah, uh, and the child is like, I, I didn't ask to be here. I just said, where's the fruit at? Well, if you got any desires at all, it's like, uh, cause I'm incompetent. I express my embarrassment on the child. Cover your kids, parents. Do not express embarrassment. Lack, low self-esteem, do not express that to them. Anger, frustration, because you don't got it all. Deal with that with other friends or internalize it. Do not project that, because they don't know how to process that. They're just open to everybody else that's coming in with the band. So the kid is confused, and confusion opens the door for rebellion, and rebellion opens the door for, for rejection. I don't even know. Cover your kids. You deal with your confusion with other adults. You get yourself a friend. You get wise counsel. Your kids can't handle all the weight that you, you telling them, yo. You're opening them up and exposing them to realms they ain't ready for. And if they're not going to seek God in those new realms, things are going to seek them. And they're going to be crippled 18 years. But I speak. <laughs> I got to. <laughs> I speak freedom today. I was going to say I speak the spirit of straightening today. <laughs> Nothing straight but straightening. You got to help me. I need to be delivered from trap. Amen. I said amen. I said amen. Even music. Constant and consistent. It's going to wear on your mind. And it can alter your beliefs. You got to be careful what you expose yourself to. But cover these kids, man. Please. I know you're frustrated. I know you're biased. I know he left you. I know she. Please. Cover that baby you holding. In the name of Jesus, just like she's secure and resting in your arms, you can't sleep like that unless you completely trust the arms you're in. Parents, make sure your kids trust you enough to rest in you, because that'll, that'll develop them to rest in him. That'll condition them to rest in his arms. If they can rest in your arms, they will be more apt to rest in his. Oh, Jesus. I bless that child and your whole family by all the power that God has given me. Matter of fact, it ain't none of my power. Holy Spirit, bless that entire family. Fill in every void. Let there be no lack in Jesus' name. Amen. That's why God blesses you. Because where lack is, the enemy can fill. Wherever lack is, he wants to fill that. Manipulators find out your weakness and try to help you. Manipulators find out what you need and try to become what you need. So God was like, yo, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't need nothing. I don't want for nothing. Because soon as I want, I'm open. Somebody close the door and say, I shall not want. I said, close the door and say, I shall not want. Okay. So in my third closing, final closing, thank y'all for coming and staying. In the same spirit that we were singing, oh, 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 he's still here. Oh, 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 oh,
just wanted to remind you, it's the same spirit, all right? But the God who loves, he corrects, he comforts, he blesses, he takes care of, he provides for, he corrects, and he loves, and he gives to, and he provides for, and he blesses, and he gives favor, he corrects, and then he gives you blessings, and he blesses you, eyes haven't seen it, he corrects. So with all the wisdom given from me from the Lord, I say, don't live like unbelievers around you who walk in their empty delusions. Empty delusions. Their corrupted logic has been clouded because their hearts are so far from God. Logic, whatever makes sense to them, it's clouded. Whatever makes sense to unbelievers, I would just question it. I'm not saying you ain't got no wisdom. I'm not saying you can't help me. But... If you're not close to God, I don't know how much you can help me. I went to a psychologist. I went to a shrink when my wife and I was about to divorce. I went. I said, I know enough preachers and prophets. I know enough of the church. Bump the church. I don't want no bishop. I, help me. Sister, help me. <laughs> she sat across that table for me for like eight weeks. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> Well, you know you're descendants, descendants of apes. So that pride of your, the ape mentality, just the pride, I was like, I, 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 I said, Ty, just chew the meat, spit out the bones. You don't know everything, just, you don't know. You need help right now. Let this woman help you. That was my experience. And if anybody's a psychologist, counselor, or whatever, then hats and shoes off to you. Thank you for doing what you do. But ultimately, my help comes from the Lord. Ultimately, I look to the hills. Ultimately, I let him direct me to who to talk to. I don't Google. I got to Google. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Don't stop playing. Keep playing. Don't stop. <laughs> I'm freestyling. <laughs> Let God lead you to who to talk to. If I had it, I'm saying, if I had it to do over again, I would do that. Okay. Yo, their logic, what makes sense to them, is far from God. Their blinded understanding and deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God because of spiritual apathy. Apathy is carelessness. I don't care about nothing. They don't care about the spirit realm. They surrendered their lives to lewdness, impurity, and sexual obsession. I ain't got time. Next one, I just want to read it to y'all as we go. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. That ain't God. And you know that. So since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature. So the thing that connects with the lies is something in us. You cannot be deceived unless something in you wants it. Don't want anything that bad. Are y'all hearing me? That's why Jesus said, deny your flesh. Because something in you wants. So I got to cut off that part of me that keeps getting me tricked. If you're sick of going back to the same man, sick of going back to the same girl, sick of going back to the same situation, let me cut off the thing that keeps reaching for that. Because unless somebody come to your house and choke you into submission to be with them, we got to reach. So what's in me? What in me is reaching for what I know I don't want? I cut it! And it's hard to cut because it's part of me. It's like circumcision. It's how you identify as a child of God. By the you that you cut in the most private place. Okay. Which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let your spirit be new. Let it renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature. Somebody say, all things new. Created to be like God. I'm done. Truly righteous and holy. Let's go. The next one. Let's go. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. I'm telling y'all all of these don'ts because these are what give access. That's all. It's not, it's not condemnation. We're trying to sh close the doors that give these other ghosts access. Are y'all understanding that? Somebody say amen. For we are all parts of the same body and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Don't stay mad. That's how the devil gets in. Yes. 
I ain't got time. We get so angry at the smallest. Ugh. And if we're that easily angered, we open the door for the enemy. All right, let me go to the next one. Let me go. I'm done. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. If anyone you have stolen, don't steal no more. Give an honest living. Be, give yourself. Encourage each other. All right, I said that last week. Let's go to the next one. Oh, no, Jesus. Lay aside bitter words. Bitter words. Bitter words. She coming? Bitter words. Who? Bitter words. Why are you bitter? Lay aside bitter words. Lay aside bitter words. Why? For what? Lay aside bitter words. That's giving access. I know it seems simple. It seems like a small act, but it's giving large access. Lay aside. I know we don't like this. That's why I'm glad I made your song and we all did all this. And all that. Lay aside bitter words. Not just a bitter heart, but bitter words. Matter of fact, out of the abundance of the heart. Temper tantrums. You just lose it. You just set it off. You just. And we think that's tough, especially if you grew up in Pine Hills. That's the only hood I know, y'all, besides Camden. <laughs> Teach me some more. Okay. Mercy Drive. Ivy Lane. You know, feel me? How y'all doing, Ivy Mercy? I love y'all, you feel me? That's my people right there. But we got a lot messed up, yo. The hood got a lot, the culture of the hood is this. Temper tantrums, bitter words, revenge. They shoot up your block. We gonna shoot up their block. You got the fight in school, who did it? It's not how you feel, what do you think? Are you okay? No, who did it? Revenge is first. Man, I'm glad Major sung. I'm so glad he sung. Oh, I'm glad he sung. Uh, profanity. Oh, Jesus. I like that. It's preaching for itself. I ain't saying nothing. Y'all just getting a whole sermon out of one word, profanity. Y'all getting a whole sermon in your spirit. Talk, Jesus. Talk, Jesus. Talk, Lord, Jesus. You got new cuss words that ain't come out yet. And the demons is like, cool, if they do that, they'll do this. It ain't just profanity. It's never just that. Ooh. Now, I'm not a cusser. Oh, but I let, oh. Oh, God. Let me speak in tongues now, just in case. Ain't nobody flawless up in here. Nobody. nobody. Including and especially me. Insults. I love cracking on people and joking, but there's a line. But that's how I learned to fight back. I got clown, black, buck tooth, skinny. Well, you, 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 you gotta be quick. Yo, you, so, you, you, be, you better be quick with it. It's in the sense, it's part of the culture. It's part of the clap back culture. <laughs> I'm just trying to survive. You black, well, you, you, you your mom ain't here. Oh, and I go too deep, like, oh. I know you're just joking. The spirits don't joke. They're very intentional. We was talking last night. The comedies on Netflix are one of the most darkest demonic flicks ever. But they can get away with it because it's just comedy. It's just jokes. Anyway, let me go. I said I'm going to read it. But instead... What I'm gonna do if I don't get revenge? What I'm gonna do if I ain't gonna be? What I'm gonna do if we don't clown and joke and insult it? Instead, this is how you keep the door closed to the ghost, y'all. Be kind. That's like ah. 
We don't even know how to do that. And it's okay to not know how to do it because it's a fruit of the Spirit. You're not going to always know how to do it in your flesh. So never conjure kindness. Let Him lead you. You don't got to conjure it to be obedient. Just release it. Just let. Let this mind be in you, which is awesome. Just let it. When we try, we got false humility, false kindness, fake love, because we're trying to obey the, the law religiously. Look at your neighbor and say, let go and let God. That's it. God, be kind through me because I ain't got it in me. I halfway like him. <laughs> Y'all feel me? Instead of all of that lying and cussing and all that I mentioned before y'all and the delusions and all, be kind and affectionate towards one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? <laughs> then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. Look at your neighbor and say, I forgive you. Are we done? Is we finished or is we through? Oh, we're not done. See that no, that's revenge. Don't render evil for evil. But, instead of getting somebody back, follow. That's what but means, instead of that, do this. So he never leaves you with just deliverance without filling. Okay? Don't do that, but fill your, follow after that which is good, both for you and for all men. In everything, you gotta give thanks. Give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Don't quench the spirit. So not doing all of the good and being kind you quench the spirit forgive y'all love be kind and I love God because again he's just filling you up with purity in the water he's not even saying stop sinning you over here doing this it ain't even a focus be kind that's harder than <laughs> not sinning because again you can do you can do disciplinary things to stop certain act acts but to change who you are, you need Jesus. Everybody standing. Thank y'all. I'm going to just stop there. This Ghostbusters, this Ghostbusters series was meant to expose the ghosts and the things that we just do almost subconsciously and the way we think and how we are almost subconsciously, not realizing that it's drawing us further and further from God I encourage you all again as you get to know God you have to know uh, how do y'all how do you know anybody you know how can I say this um, uh, Chris how do you know Tim yeah you hang with him but it, if you hung with me 365 days starting today and I never said a word. I don't know if you would know me. You could assume how I would move or how I would react to certain things. But if I don't say anything, you're not going to know me. So I know people by the fruit of their lips. You shall know them by their fruit. By what you say, I know you. So in getting to know God, it's not just prayer. That's you to him. Leave room for him to speak to you. And he often speaks through his word. Amen. It's simple, but it's real. We did this marriage summit thing. And I said, what do you advise marriages? We said, oh, we'll communicate. And we just say like basic. I mean, it's, it's the basics. But it's the strongest thing. It's the foundational things. Read the Bible. Yeah, that's things you never hear in church, right? Yo, that's how you get to know him. Read the Bible. Read the word of God. 
Learn his voice, learn his ways. And as you do that, you'll begin to see what's not his voice and what's not his ways. I pray freedom from every torment and spirit in the name of Jesus. May you rest not just when you sleep, but all day long. May you not be tormented by these evil spirits. The Lord God rebuke and cast out every tormenting spirit. Everybody say amen. amen. The Lord God rebuke and cast out all spirits of fear in the name of Jesus. It might have come in at a very, very young age. It has taken root in your heart. The Lord God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uproot and cast out the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. The Lord God rebuke and cast out the spirit of rejection in the name of Jesus. Rejection, resentment, and rebellion in the name of Jesus. By the power of Almighty God, be uprooted and cast out of your people in the name of the name that has all power over any unclean spirit. There's only one, and it's Jesus. Somebody say, amen. You are free, Liv. You are free. I know I didn't name everything. I didn't name everything. But you go home and you name it tonight. Be honest with yourself. Cleanse yourself. Cleanse yourself tonight and be free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands and say, I am free. Clap your hands and say, I am free.